Hi guys, I don't know about you, but January felt really long. And maybe part of that is because I read so many books. Oh my gosh. I read nine books, which is the most books I've ever read in a month, I think. And there's kind of a caveat to that, but I'm not gonna let anybody take that away from me. I stand by the fact that I read nine books and I'll explain what I mean by that. Oh wait, actually I forgot. I wanted to start going over the TBR that I had picked out for the month and then compare it to what I actually read. I'm not really sure how I want to do that. I think maybe I'll just show you really quick all of the books that were on the TBR and then we'll get into what I actually read. I never ended up posting a January TBR video or my December wrap up, but I actually did not pick out my TBR myself for January. I wanted to have my boyfriend pick it out. So the books that we're gonna go through right now that were on my TBR are all the books that he picked out for me. If you know me, then you might recognize that some of these are books I never would have picked out for myself, even though I owned almost all of these. So for the books that were on my TBR, we have The Hobbit, Spy Family Volume 1, City of Bones, Babel, the fourth Percy Jackson book, The Battle of the Labyrinth, 1984, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, and Red Rising. I feel like you can definitely tell that this was picked out by a man, which isn't bad. I feel like I expanded my taste into books that I mostly already owned but wasn't really interested in yet, which is a good thing. That's why I like to have other people pick out my TBR. So onto what this is really about. My first read of the year was Billy Summers by Stephen King. I did actually read like 80 to 90% of this in December, but I finished it on January 1st, so it counts for January. I felt kind of iffy about it because it was literally the first day of the month and I read most of it the previous month, but it doesn't matter. It is gonna count for January. This was my first Stephen King book and I was really excited. A lot of people were getting into this book because of Haley Pham and I'm one of them. I only picked this up because of her and I'm glad that I finally picked it up. I feel like this was very different from my usual read, but in a good way, and I like his writing. This is about a man named Billy Summers who is a hitman, and he decides that he wants to quit. But before he quits, there is one job that is just too big not to take. That might not sound like a whole lot for him to talk about for 500 something pages, but that is all I feel like you need to know before going into it. I don't even know how much more is on the back of the book. I just like to go into books pretty blind and it was good. If you haven't read Stephen King, I will say, even though this one isn't a horror, I feel like none of his books are particularly happy. I had to take a break because my upstairs neighbor started vacuuming. So I honestly don't remember what I was saying. I think I was going to say that obviously Stephen King is known for horror books. This is not a horror. I would just say it's more of just a general fiction, but there definitely are still some dark things that are going on and it is not a happy book by any means. So just know that going into it. I have a feeling that all of his books are like that. I don't know that he has anything that's not slightly disturbing or sad or whatever. So yeah, some interesting stuff does happen in this book, but I liked it. And I ended up giving it, I think 3.5 stars. I think it was just a little bit too long for me. If it was a little bit shorter, it would have been more of a four star. I think I would have enjoyed it even more, but it was definitely good. And I want to try more of his books. Then I read volumes one and two of Spy Family. And this is why I said that there's a caveat to what I read this month, because I'm sure that plenty of people would not count manga as books. I mean, technically they are not novels, they are graphic novels. It's mostly pictures and just a few words on every page, but I'm gonna count them. This is the first and only manga that I've ever read. I never really thought that I would be into manga, but I'm pretty sure it was Katie's reading that talked about these and made me wanna pick them up. I've also just always seen these and I don't know, I just like the covers. My light is messing this up, but I just think that the color palette and the way that they have the cover art it just has always spoken to me. I just like it. Anyways, this is about this man who is a spy. He is like one of the top spies at his agency and he has to go on this super secret mission where he has to basically infiltrate this school to get to this one important guy. And in order to do that, he has to pretend to have a family. So he adopts this girl who is like six years old and she's who he enrolls in the school. And then he finds this woman who is an assassin and she pretends to be his wife. The daughter is actually a telepath, so she can read their thoughts. So she knows that he is a spy and she's an assassin, but the man and woman don't know about each other. They think that for whatever reason, the other person is agreeing to be in this fake relationship, but he doesn't know she's an assassin. She doesn't know that he's a spy. I don't know if that made sense, but that is the basic gist of it. And I just think it's really cute and fun. It's silly, it's funny, it's quick to read. Honestly, reading this is pretty addictive because of how fast that I can get through it. So I only allowed myself to read volumes one and two, because I didn't wanna just finish it and be done with this series way too quick. 
I felt kind of strange giving these a rating because they're not an actual novel, but I ended up giving them both four stars because I really loved them, but it's not like they're life-changing or anything. Moving on to The Hobbit. I actually read this in a reading vlog, so I don't want to talk about it too much, but I actually really hated this book, which was really disappointing because I know this is so many people's favorite book of all time. I was hoping that I was really going to love this, but I just thought it was so boring. If you haven't read this or seen the movies, which I hadn't, it follows Bilbo Baggins and I think 13 dwarves. They're basically on this cross country adventure trying to get to some mountain where there is a dragon who is hoarding all of this treasure that it stole from one of the dwarves families like a long time ago. Probably like 60% of the book is just them traveling to this mountain, but it felt like nothing was happening. It was so boring. When things were happening, it felt like the same thing was happening over and over again. I didn't hate his writing. I definitely did read like a required reading, like a classic. I didn't actually realize how old this book is. It came out in the 1930s. But anyways, I was just crawling along trying to get to the dragon. They finally got to the dragon and maybe for like 10 or 20 pages, it was interesting. And then it went right back to boring. I ended up giving it two stars. If Brendan didn't pick it out for me, I think I just would have DNF'd it, which is really sad. I was really hoping to love it. Once I finally finished that, I picked up City of Bones, which is in the same reading vlog. And oh my gosh, I loved this. I am so glad that I read this. This was the perfect book to pick up after The Hobbit. I felt like The Hobbit was putting me in a bit of a book slump, so I wanted something fast paced and fun. And that's exactly what this is. I read, I think the first three books in this trilogy when I was in middle school. So I remembered some of the bigger plot points, but I didn't remember most of it. This is the very first book in the Shadowhunters world, which is like a interconnected series of maybe 15 books. It's a super popular series, so I'm sure that most people have already read it or have at least heard of it. And I just didn't expect to love this as much as I did. It was just fun. That is the word that I would use to describe it. It's young adult, so it's really easy to read, really fast paced. I am a slow reader, so it was pretty satisfying to be able to get through this pretty thick book pretty quickly. And I just have nothing but good things to say. Sure, it is quite young and there were a lot of parts that were pretty predictable, but it's young adult and it's also the first book in the series. So I think it's only gonna get better from there. And I just, I'm so excited to continue this. I'm so glad that he picked this out because I don't know when I would have picked it up. I gave this four stars, which might sound low because I'm talking about it so highly, but four is honestly a really good rating. It just didn't give me anywhere near the five star feelings, but it is a book that I loved and really enjoyed. So it very much deserves the four stars. I maybe could have said like 4.25 or something, but that just felt a little ridiculous. Then I read Percy Jackson, The Battle of the Labyrinth, which is book four. This was cute, but honestly, I didn't really connect with it. I think a big part of the problem was that it had been at least six months since I read the first three books. So I didn't really remember a lot of the characters or what had happened in the past. So I think that if I read it closer to when I read the first three, I would have enjoyed it a little bit more. This is my first time reading the series and I think that they are fun books. They're good, but they are not exactly my favorite. Like I won't lie, I am not excited to read the fifth one. I'm excited to just complete a series, but reading the fifth book, I just, I don't know. I think that they're cute, they're fun, but I had to listen to most of this on audiobook because I just couldn't connect with it. And I just didn't feel like reading it. I think I gave the first three that I read four stars, but this one I gave a three. Then I read what I think is probably my favorite book of the month, but I'm kind of stuck between this one and City of Bones. But I did rate this one higher, so probably this one, which is Red Rising. Again, this is another one that was totally inspired by Haley Pham. The series came out like 10 years ago, so it's nothing new and people really loved it when it came out, but she read it sometime in 2023 and it really just had a resurgence. This is one of the few science fiction books that I've read. People describe this as Hunger Games in space and I kind of see that, but at the same time, I don't feel like it's the best representation of it. But to be fair, I don't really wanna give any information away. I kind of want you to just go into it blind if you haven't read this. The synopsis on the back is really short because I think the author wants the same. All that I think you need to know is that this follows Darrow. He is living on Mars and in this society, there is a very strict caste like hierarchy system and it's all based on color and he is a red, which is at the very bottom of the caste system. Plot wise, I feel like that is all you should know going into it. I really enjoyed this book, but I have to say, I'm honestly shocked that a lot of people that I follow like this book because I feel like this was pretty brutal. There is a lot of graphic fighting and stuff going on and I just couldn't picture a lot of the people that I follow reading it and enjoying it. I can't really explain why, but I finished it and I was like, huh, I really enjoyed that, but I honestly am a little bit shocked that it's so widely loved, not in general, but just by the booktube girlies that I follow. 
I don't know why, but this book just does not align with their taste in my mind. I feel like that is one more thing that you should know going into it, is that if you are not a fan of brutal graphic scenes, like fight scenes and things like that, then I wouldn't recommend this to you. I have a really hard time explaining my thoughts on this because I don't want to tell you the plot, but I will say I thought it was really fast paced. The first at least 100 pages or so got me hooked and it was just nonstop. I did feel like there was a point towards the like three quarters mark where it dragged on a little bit. I got a little bit bored. I was waiting for that kind of portion of the plot to be over. I think that if I wasn't slightly bored, except I wasn't really bored. It just was a little bit too long in this one area. If it wasn't for that, I think this would be a five star. After that, I took a break actually from reading the books on my TBR. I went book shopping with my mom and had her pick out a book for me to read. It's actually in a video that I swear I'm gonna edit this weekend. Originally, I was just doing an unhaul. We were gonna go book shopping, but once we were there, I just thought it would be fun to have her pick out a random book for me. And she picked out The Truth About Melody Brown by Lisa Jewell. I don't really wanna talk about this much because I wanna save my thoughts and everything for that video but I guess I will say that I didn't officially rate this because my mom and I did something that was quite a disservice to this book. I know I'm being very vague but I will say that I settled on like a 2, 2.5 star. I don't think that that necessarily reflects the book itself but that is how I would rate my experience. It is about this girl Melody Brown who has no memories before her ninth birthday. When she's a kid, she just wakes up one day and she can't remember anything from before she was nine. She's now in her early thirties and she starts having these flashbacks of stuff that happened before she was nine. So it's dual timeline. It goes back and forth between her now in her thirties and then her throughout basically all the ages where she's remembering all of these things. So yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. I know that was probably really annoying, but I haven't said my full thoughts on it for that video and I wanna kind of save it for that. Last book is Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep by Philip K. Dick. This is actually the book that inspired the movie Blade Runner, which I have never seen, but apparently it is a very popular book and it's very popular with men. Not that that's a bad thing, but it's just very much a man's book, I feel. I did not have this on my physical TBR. When Brendan was picking out my TBR, we went to Barnes and I wanted him to pick up a random book. He is not a big reader, so he honestly just didn't know where to start. He had never heard of this book before, but it's obviously what he ended up picking. He picked it because it's really short and he wanted me to get through as many books as I could. And I will give it that, it was short. This takes place in a world where there are androids and humans and androids are just robots, but they look just like humans. It's really hard to tell an android from a human. And this book takes place on earth, but people are living I think in Mars and other planets and androids are legal in those other planets, but on Earth, they're not legal. So our main character, Rick, is a bounty hunter and his whole job is to find androids who have escaped and fled to Earth and kill them. I honestly thought that the premise was pretty interesting and I was hoping it would be a quick short read. And I think I read this in two days, so it definitely was short and I didn't dislike this, but I gave it three stars. It definitely wasn't a favorite. It's not a book that I would recommend to people. I was kind of in the same situation with this as I was with the Percy Jackson book where I just couldn't really get myself to read it and I had to listen to most of it on audiobook. But I think that that was mostly because of the writing. It's a bit of an older book and this one was written a little bit more like the classics that you're required to read in high school where some of the stuff was just a little too convoluted. I read the first two or three pages and I just wasn't really loving it. So I switched to audiobook and honestly, I might've listened to the entire thing on audiobook, but it's really short. So it was a really short audiobook anyways. And I found a really good one on YouTube. So I think that that made my experience a little bit better. I enjoyed it more as an audiobook than I would have reading it. I don't know if I already said, but I gave it a three stars. Okay, so those are all of the books that I read in January. I would say it definitely wasn't my best month. Yes, I read more books than I've ever read before, but I would say half of these were duds and then the other half I really enjoyed. So not a horrible month, but it wasn't a consistent one. I don't see myself reading as many books in one month again anytime soon, and that is totally fine with me. I would much rather read less books in a month, but really enjoy all of them than read nine and only enjoy half of them. I mean, who knows? Maybe I will come back at the end of February and say that I read a ton of books and I really loved them. That would be amazing. But my goal is never really to read a lot of books. It just happened that this month I read a lot and I'm still very excited about it. It still feels like a fun achievement. That wasn't the best wrap up that I've ever had, but I'm looking forward to February and that's pretty much all I've got to say. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Bye.